So artificial intelligence is uh, a very exciting field. I'd say it's at least as exciting as gene editing, but I don't want to have a fight about it. Uh, let me first explain what it is for those of you who are not completely familiar with it. Um, so we all know what computers are, and we all know that computers are very annoying, and you have to tell them exactly what you want to have done. Um, and when you talk to Siri, Siri is sort of stupid and doesn't understand what you said and so on. Um, so our goal is to make machines that are uh, intelligent, um, that can see, that can hear, that can understand, uh, they can learn, they can discover new things for us, uh, they can help us make plans and decide how to behave, uh, and so on. So that's the goal, and clearly, uh, the more intelligent you can make the machine, the better. Uh, that's been something that people in the field have believed for, uh, right since the beginning of the field, uh, and the Simpsons have even made little jokes about, uh, about this process. Uh, AI is actually all around you. It's not science fiction, but uh, it already exists. So back in 1997, a computer beat the world chess champion. That was a very big event uh, when you guys were very young. Well, actually, no, you probably weren't even born then. Um, if you play any video games, uh, the characters that are in your video games are driven by artificial intelligence software. So they are deciding how to play against you. Uh, and in many games, they actually have to dumb down the AI, because otherwise the AI will just beat you every time. Uh, recently, a television quiz show called Jeopardy was won by a computer called Watson, uh, beat the two human world champions uh, in that game. That was a very big media event. Uh, but something much more mundane. So probably many of you use Google all the time. Google is actually an artificial intelligence company, and the Google software, the search engine, is an example of artificial intelligence that's used literally billions of times every single day. Uh, Siri is another one where, rather than being typed at, uh, you can speak to Siri, and, and the processing of the speech, allowing it to understand what it is that you've said, uh, is part of artificial intelligence. And right now on Mars, the Mars rover robots are still driving around, uh, and artificial intelligence uh, is working with the engineers back on Earth uh, to keep the robot alive and to plan its trajectories across the Martian landscape. So AI is all around us. Uh, I just want to show you some videos of uh, real robots. This is called the Big Dog Robot. And uh, it's actually incredibly lifelike. Um, so this is uh, the result of work by Mark Raybert, who lives in Boston. And here it is on some ice. You can see that it gets onto an icy puddle and almost falls down. So when you see that, it's hard to believe it's not a living being, but it's actually a robot. We also have, uh, this is from my own lab at Berkeley, this is the, the famous towel folding robot, uh, which in fact just this week was invited to be a, an exhibit in the Victoria and Albert Museum in London, which is one of the famous design museums in the world. Um, and you can see that what it does is it first of all has to look at the towel, uh, find out what the shape of the towel, doesn't know, hasn't seen this towel before, find out where the corners are, and then it folds it up. So it's pretty cool. Um, so all of this progress, this technology, is really uh, incredibly exciting at the moment uh, for the media and for the people with money, because there is just tons of money to be made. Uh, if you think about uh, simple search engines are worth right now about a trillion dollars, uh, and AI technology that goes beyond that can be worth ma uh, m many times more than that. So, so we are seeing lots and lots of very exciting news going on. So lots, uh, lots of money, lots of transactions. Uh, Google is buying every single AI company they can get hold of. Other companies, Baidu is the, ch the Chinese Google. They're also getting into the business. Uh, Tesla just released uh, the software, so you can get into your Tesla now and, and take your hands off the steering wheel, and it drives by itself. Um, Toyota just announced a billion dollar investment. So lots of things are going on that's very exciting. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the future. So you're already familiar from watching sci-fi movies uh, with the idea that uh, robots can be helpful to us or sometimes not so helpful. So you can shout out the names of these if you recognize them. Star right, Star Wars robots, C-3PO and R2-D2. Wally. -E. Optimus Prime, very good, there he is, Optimus Prime. This one? TARS, TARS, very good. This is, uh, this is my favorite movie robot. 
This guy, you might not know him. From Aliens, that's right, from Aliens. This is Bishop. This is Bishop when he was in, in a good shape. This is Bishop after he got attacked by the alien. And some robots, right, we're also familiar with ones that are not so good. So here's a robot from a movie in 1927. So the word robot came from about 1920. And in the, when it was first invented in a play, uh, the robots actually took over the world. Uh, and they killed all the humans. Uh, and this is a 1927 movie, one of the most famous movies in history. It uh, has a, a female robot character that's very evil. This one? Hal. Hal from, two, from 2001, The Space Odyssey. Terminator, you know him. Agent Smith. Yeah, Agent Smith, my favorite bad guy. Ava, right, this is Ava from Ex Machina, really creepy. So, um, so, Chappie, right? So there have been a lot of headlines in the, in the media recently um, about the possibility that AI might be uh, something that we need to be concerned about. And this is a more extreme example that AI could be the end of the human race. Um, first of all, it's not gonna happen right like next week, okay? So please don't get upset or worried about this. Uh, this is something that we have to be concerned about, but we have a long time, I think, to, to prepare and make sure that it doesn't happen. But it is worth asking, well, why are people saying that AI could be the end of the human race? Right? I mean, what could be wrong with making uh, machines smarter and better, right? Eventually, they will probably be able to look at more information than people can, look further into the future than we can, and make better decisions as a result. And that could be fantastic for the human race. Because now, uh, you think about it, everything we have comes from the fact that we're smart. And if we have machines that can magnify our intelligence, then we can do things that we can't do unaided, but we really want to do. We really want to eliminate disease. So with, uh, with uh, the technology that Natalie just described, uh, plus the ability of AI systems to interpret lots of information from experiments and build complicated models of biology, we can actually cure a whole lot of diseases. We can also end war and poverty and, and a lot of other things. Have we thought about what this means? Right? If this happens, then this is probably the biggest event in the history of the human race. Uh, and we have to be very careful that things turn out well. One of the things that is confusing is a lot of the media articles say, well, you know, this is a big risk to the human race because killer robots are going to come and, and destroy us all, you know, just like in the Terminator movies. So almost every newspaper article on this topic has this picture in it. Uh, and I want you to see this and say, OK, whatever, whenever I see that picture, it's rubbish. Right? This is not the problem. Uh, we're not talking about armies of killer robots suddenly deciding they hate the human race and trying to kill everybody. So what is the problem exactly? The problem is that when you build very intelligent uh, machines and you give them something to do, they take it very, very literally and they try their best to do exactly what you ask them to do, right? If you ask them to do something that isn't quite right, then you're setting up a competition because now you've got a machine that's trying to do something and it's not exactly what you wanted them to do, but it's gonna do it whether you like it or not. So how do you make sure that this doesn't happen? Um, we have to figure out what we really want. So what do we really want? We might, for example, ask the robot to uh, find a way to end human suffering. That seems like a good goal, right? Unfortunately, the easiest way to end human suffering is actually just to kill everybody, because uh, then we wouldn't be suffering anymore, right? So you have to be very careful what you ask for and make sure it's exactly right. And this is a very old story, going back to Aladdin and the Lamp, right? When you get a genie, genie comes out, gives you your wishes. What's your third wish? Your third wish is, please undo the first two wishes, because I made a mess of it. Right? Unfortunately, with a super intelligent machine, the machine might say, I'm sorry, Dave, I'm afraid I can't do that. <laughs> so when you think about the future, there are two things, two sides of this question. Right? Can we find a way to make sure that machines are perfectly aligned with what we want so that we're always happy with the way they behave and what they do for us? Um, and if we can get that to work, then the human race can sort of have whatever it wants. And the question is, uh, are we ready to have whatever we want? Thank you very much.